Okay, set that there. I think we're good. Hey everyone, Andrew Marston here again for the Euchre Media YouTube channel. And today's After Effects tip is how to control any property value with layer names using the split expression. Okay. All right, here we are on the computer. And before we dive in, let's take a quick look at what we're gonna learn. I'm going to cover the basic syntax of the split expression and then show several examples of using split to easily control things like stroke widths, spreadsheet data selection, aligning boxes to perfectly fit to grids, and finally creating a parallax effect, all using the split expression with layer names. And I should mention right up front that there is already on the Euchre Media channel a tutorial about the split expression. But in this tutorial, we're going to use split in a much different way. So uh, just to clear the air, Sergey, I'm not just ripping you off. Well, I mean, maybe a little bit. All right, here we are in After Effects, and this project file will be available for download in the description of this video if you're interested. It won't include the stock footage elements that I'm using, but everything else will be there. For starters, let me just show you the basic split expression. I'm gonna make a text layer, and why not center it? And then also a shape layer. Then I'm gonna add an expression to the source text of the text layer by alt clicking on the stopwatch. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is pick whip the shape layer and type dot name with a semicolon. And you'll see that now what's being displayed is the name of the shape layer as a string of text. So now let's go ahead and add split. And we do that by typing dot split after name and inside the parentheses add quotation marks and whatever character at which we want After Effects to split this string. So in this case, I'll put a space, hit enter, and you can see what's happened. So at this point, After Effects is viewing this as three pieces of data in an array. And we can isolate any part of this array by typing square brackets and whatever part number we want. For example, zero. And you can see now that only the first section is being displayed. And the reason why we use zero instead of one is because when you count in arrays, you start with zero. So for example, shape is zero. We put one, it's a we see layer. And if we put two, we now have the number one. And this is what we're after. This is incredibly powerful. So let me show you how we can use this. So here we have a somewhat uh, pedestrian animated map. So the way this is set up is the stroke widths of all the road layers and the walking route layer are linked to sliders on this map control layer. So if I change the value of the sliders, it changes the widths of all the strokes. And although these sliders are convenient, we can actually control their values using the layer name and split expression so that we don't even have to toggle into the layer properties. And I've already actually done this and I had them disabled, but here's what that looks like. This layer.name, which references the layer name, and then we're gonna split that layer name into an array based on the hyphens. And then in this case, we want the fourth part of that array. So in array counting, that's number three. So in this case, it's going to be 20. We do the same thing here, except this time we wanna pull the 40. So we want the third part or number two, zero, one, two. And so now when we change the layer name, uh, I don't know, let's do something really obvious like five and 50. You can see that we're controlling these slider values and in turn, the widths of those strokes. So at this point, you probably get it, but I wanna show just a few more examples of how this might be used. So here we have a bar graph that's pulling data directly from a CSV file. And although it is beyond the scope of this tutorial exactly how to rig up a graph like this to interact with a spreadsheet, I wanna point out that each of these layers here are different bars in the graph and that I've used layer name dot split so that the first number in the layer name tells After Effects which column of the spreadsheet to look in to find the data for that bar and the second number is which row. So to show you exactly how handy this is, if I duplicate this layer, but instead of one six or one seven, I'm gonna say now column two, row, in this case, I'm gonna say row zero because that would be the first row. I'm gonna change the label color, bring it to the bottom. We can see that now we are pulling data from a different cell. And if I just duplicate this, oh, well, okay, when you duplicate a layer that ends in zero, for some reason After Effects uh, numerates it to number two, but I'm gonna change it to one. And then we just duplicate, 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 and we have a whole nother data set. Okay, so here's another way to take advantage of using the layer name and name.split to easily control properties. So here we have a very simple grid with a square placed exactly within the grid lines. And the way that, oh, we don't need that. And the way that this is set up is exactly the same as finding the row and column in the CSV. The first number in the layer name 
is the row and the second number is the column. So when we change them, the block moves. And of course, the first row and column are zero. Uh, I should point out that under the control layer, there is a slider called size, which dictates the size both of the grid and of the square. And if we look at the expressions under the X and Y position, we'll see that on each we are calling one part of this layer name. In the X case, it's the second part. In the Y case, it's the first part. And then we're multiplying it by that size so that every time we change these numbers, that number gets multiplied by the size of these grid cells and the block will move to fit exactly within the grid. So lastly, let's look at how we can use name.split to achieve a parallax effect. So let me solo each element so we can see individually what's going on. Here we have the foreground, and then we have, uh, I think I also called this foreground, but it's these dots. And then we have this grid here. And lastly, underneath, we have this circuitry background that's moving. The first thing I should point out is that under the control layer, we have a slider that I've named parallax, and that goes from zero to negative 431. And I'll just keep that up here. It's also worth noting that each of these layer names ends in a comma and then a number. And I suspect you already kind of know what's going to happen, but let me just go through it. Under the X position, there's an expression where we use name.split to split the layer name at the comma and then pull that number. And then we're taking the actual X position of the layer. And then we have a variable called move, which is referencing that parallax slider on the control layer. And to put it all together, we take the initial X value and we add to it the parallax amount times the amount after the comma on the layer name. And so that's why this foreground layer with the number two at the end is moving twice as fast as this grid layer, which has the number one at the end, and we get our parallax effect. So that's the whole tip. Thank you for watching. I hope that you found this video useful. Um, leave a comment if you can think of any other ways to apply the name.split expression and make sure to like the video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. All right, guys, have a good day.